Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Consalvo's Place. In a minute, you're going to meet, and we are excited to introduce you to what we think is just a groundbreaking duo uh, for King and Country in just a moment. But first, congrats to our boys at 1500 Sound Academy. They are opening their doors today, actually, for the first on-site students after this long COVID journey. Uh, I'm gonna run down there and check them out in a little bit. So good, good on them. Watch for details at this space for the upcoming Creator Classic. It's brought to you by KRK. Um, you'll submit your beats, then you win your bracket. And then if you continue to win, you head to Nashville and get mentored by mm. a whole panel of greats. It's pretty cool. Uh, next week, we'll also share with you the long-awaited tech nominations. Let's see who made the cut, uh, all the folks that make the stuff that you make your music with. Uh, so we'll do that. As always, hit us on all our social media, like, subscribe, and notify, and we will get back to you. Um, but without further ado, and we are super pleased to welcome the small bone boys, Luke and Joel, otherwise known as for King and Country. Welcome, gents. Herb, Dave, what a pleasure. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. We're all, all, all the way, uh, we're over here in Montana today. Playing the state fair, in fact. Oh, nice, nice. Are crowds wearing masks or no? Depends on where you are. It depends, man. It really yeah. does. Like we, we just we we did. We kind of put the kibosh on shows. Obviously, like the rest of the world last year, we did some drive-in shows, mm -hmm. um, which were very novel and very difficult. You oh, know, man. you're playing like the parking lot of the Rose Bowl in December last year, oh, my and God. it's like. There's 700 cars and it's incredible, but at the same time, it, it was a bit of a precarious thing. But yeah, we all made it out and um, we're pleased to be sort of, eh, you know, I don't know if you can say on this side of it, but on some side of it. Mm -hmm. And um, particularly when you get up into these more rural areas, you know, they're a bit more spread out and, yeah. and you, you end up, you know, people people are a little a little more low key, but we're, we're making sure we're, we're on the up and up with all of the guidelines and details as they continue to yeah. unfold. I will say though, the, the, the just reality of being in person again, mm -hmm. there's something metaphysical and spiritual and, and beautiful about Completely. whatever that, whatever that thing is. And we've, we've missed that greatly. So we're, we're glad <clears throat> for the moment. We're glad to be back at it. But that also, that, that speaks to a point that I think, is really true amongst creators. You know, because of what we do, we can file, share, and send things and do all that kind of stuff. But there's mm -hmm. nothing like being in a room. There's nothing like doing that collaborative songwriting. There's not, we were talking to Dave Cobb and he was talking about, he just sits across from the vocalist. They look at each other in the eye and he gets a great vocal. And then we'll get yeah. to the rest of it just from sitting each other. And, and I noticed, and I think it's exciting that as we find our ways and the green shoots break through the ground to get back together and so on and so forth, I think some mm. greatness is going to come back out of that just from our hu from human interconnection. Do you, do you agree? 100%. Heart, heart, heartedly. And think about it. I mean, you know, uh, not to steal a microphone from Luke here. You, you'll hear plenty from him. But, <laughs> but um, you know, we we... We, over the last year, it be it, you know, a club or a cathedral or a church or a, a rock show or anywhere in between. Yeah. We, the, the, I mean, there's, look, COVID has robbed us of so many things. It's loss of life. It's loss of confidence. It's loss yeah. of hope. It's all of these things. But one of the things that it's stolen from us is the ability to find commonality in gathering w with things that we're like-minded about. Yes, so you yeah. you gather because you love Foo Fighters and yes. and 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 you you're rubbing shoulders. You don't care about political position or, right. or, or 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 spiritual perspective. Yep. You're like I just love this band. Like yes. you know. And yes. so I I I do to 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 complement what you're saying, Herb. But I think this new era, people are gonna. And we're already seeing it at these these select shows that we've been playing. People are, are just beside themselves to be back together again. You in, know? in fact, I, I just want to add one other thing I want to hear from Luke and Dave. Um, I, I contend that 
it's so much easier to be divisive and separate people when you're separated by a pandemic. And people who play to that cynically and take advantage of that, it's just horrendous. Um, yeah. And and what yeah. gets you past that is oh, is community at some, at some point when I and getting together. And Man, I think you're totally right. Look, it's a, I think it's the whole. Uh, it's kind of a little bit like the uh, uh, the Facebooker online. Like, would they actually say to that those things to that person in person? I'm not right. sure that they would. I think it right. would be more. It's much more difficult to say those things uh, in person. So I think it's a little bit similar when it comes to what we're. Uh, uh, you know, when we actually see people, you know, face to face at these shows, man, you're finding all sorts of amazing things to be uh, fine in common because it's yeah. like, man, at the end of the day, like, yeah, the last, let's be real, the last year and a half, there's been some bumps and we can, yeah. and there's been bumps for everybody. Right. But uh, when you're, when you're actually together, it's almost like a lot of those things kind of fall away and it becomes, yeah. uh, it becomes a beautiful uh, kind of tapestry of, of difference and, and unification. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Can we just recognize that this is Luke right here? This is sorry. We're both at a coffee shop. <laughs> so we're trying to find like corners. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I love it. I love it. <laughs> uh, Luke, I was I was watching some of your interviews and you have some really yep. incredibly relevant opinions on let's say culture and, and society in general. And um when I read the comments, there was no negative comments about those opinions that you had, you know, like, like, like um, the thing that I liked about the way you expressed it was you weren't really trying to be um, a sociologist. You, you just had an opinion and your opinion, you, 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 you expressed it really well without, without hurting anybody's feelings or, 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 or whatever. Would, would you, uh, would you be able to uh, talk about that now? Absolutely, but in in what regard? What uh, what? Well, you know about a, about a complete family and how important that is, and things like that. Yeah. Uh, just social yeah. issues that, that that relate specifically to today's times. Yeah, well, you know, Joel and I are brothers. Yeah, well, Joel and I are brothers, and so family has always been something that's been very near and dear to our hearts. We uh, we're uh, immigrants from Australia, and so uh, hopefully you can still tell, but our accents have been messed up by. You Americans, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, originally from Australia. So we grew up in a household. There's uh, seven kids, obviously my parents. There was nine of us. And so, yeah, it's been a, a, a very interesting journey. Our dad was a concert promoter in Australia. He came over for a job in America, lost that job uh, in the music industry. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we raked leaves, mowed lawns, did all sorts of different things uh, together. And so because of that, you know, family is something that is... Um, very, very important to us. Our older sister was an artist. And so Joel and I kind of just a little bit of history for us. Uh, it, Joel and I, we, uh, we were the crew guys. We were out on the road. Joel was a stage manager. I was a lighting director and uh, we grew up on the road. And, uh, and so eventually I was playing basketball in my junior year of high school. I tore my ACL uh, playing basketball and uh, I, I went to my mom. I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. You know, sports was my thing. Uh, and, uh, she said, I think that something's going to happen by the time you graduate high school, I graduate high school, Joel comes to me and says, Hey, you want to write some songs and, uh, and sing on some demos. And that's, uh, what we've been doing kind of ever since. So it's been a, a beautiful journey with some twists and some sure. windy roads, but, sure. uh, one that we're grateful for that's brought us to this point, talking to you guys. Well, can, well, well, can said, I, well, said. well, absolutely. And, and. I don't generally do interviews. This is our 512th or whatever the case may be. It's just like amazing. And all the countries wow, we're congratulations. in. Congratulations. It's crazy, man. We're in 200 some odd countries. And, but it speaks to the power of you guys. It speaks to the power of how important what we're talking about is to others and the scale of what it is. And um, part of what's fun is, is every week, Dave and I get to hear from the best learn from them, get different perspectives. And I've never had an interview of all the ones we've done together, which is all of them, where I had my own thank you list. So I'm going to really quickly go through my thank you list to you guys, because there's certain things that you do that I absolutely love. One, your commitment to your faith, massive. 
message. Mm. So important for people to see. And you're not even trying to make a statement. You're just living your lives. So appreciate that. Two, mm. the art of being a front man. That's a craft. And it's mm. and in particular in black music, in which I came up in, not just black music, but pop music as well, too. And there's great pop front men, obviously. You guys have that in droves, whether it's natural, practiced or whatever. I just sit back and go, oh, they, they care about it. Secondly, yeah. thirdly, yeah. the commitment to stagecraft, to star power, to doing things that are innovative, that are just compelling to the audience, to really serve the audience and find mm. those moments where they go, oh my God, what are they doing? We try to do that with Pensado's Place and our award show and other stuff. And, and it's interesting for people who don't necessarily pay attention to come back and tell us, Wow, it was really so cool, those moments connected. So when I see it, it just makes me, you know, I'm black, so I can't glow really loud and I can't turn red. <laughs> our, our tribe doesn't do that, but I am glowing and turning red. And then my last thank you, although it's not my last one, is um, that when I look at your pictures and look at other kinds of things, that you understand that for an audience that style is important. It doesn't mean that it defines all of who you are, but it gives people a chance to say, wow, that makes them special, or look what I've learned from them, or they care about it. So all that is the craft of live and doing what we're doing. Mm. And I am on mm. bended knee with my thank you list. <clears throat> thank you for letting me run it down. Cause I, and, and the last part is, when if you're within 150 miles of L.A., Sean or Paul or somebody's going to have to get me some tickets and I'd like some good tickets because I need <laughs> these for, I need me some for, for, for King and country. I need that whole experience. It's one thing to watch it on video. I got to get up in it. So thank you for indulging me in my thank you list. And, and was any of it on, 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 was any of it spot? Uh, on? We could, we could literally, you know, we feel so built up. We could just end, end the interview here and we would just march out into the world with a sense of posture and pride um, because all those things you've mentioned are things that we, you know, we put a lot of thought and a lot of heart into. Hell yes. Um, we, we don't want to like, and to your point, I mean, you, you mentioned Dave off the air being, being a backslidden Christian. We, we, we don't, we're not here to, to make a commentary on, you know, what's true or not. We, we grew up in a post, religious country in Australia and have a, this wonderful lineage of faith and we're two of seven kids and our parents still love each other. So we stand on the shoulders of giants, but we just basically Jesus lovers. And, and it sort of, it sort of starts and ends there. And then pertaining to be it style or crafting a live show or what it means to be front men and be front men sharing Yes. the responsibility that's a whole other you know Rare. layer yes. um, of complexity um it's with a lot of thought and a lot of wrestle you know in fact the last the last show we did the day before yesterday probably four minutes before we were walking on stage luke and i had a brotherly a brotherly exchange <laughs> we'll call it about about certain ideas on how we should you know approach the stage or the audience and and, and look we found that it's in that tension. I mean, look, what, what, what all of us love, Dave, what you love her, what you love Luke and me, music is all about tension. It's about yes, the tension on the, the, the piano chords or on the guitar strings or in our vocal chords that creates harmony and creates yes. beauty. And, and we've, um, we're, we're up for engaging in the, in the tension, but it, it means so much. Yes, it does. Not only, not only someone say it, but someone of your, caliber and pedigree and understanding and history and music to offer that uh, is just uh, very heartwarming. So mm. thank you. I want to, I want to, I want to kind of expand on what, no, I can't expand on what Herb said. Herb said it, said it perfectly, but I had, a, I had some thoughts when I was watching your live uh, events. Um, it felt like uh, a true feast of the eyes and the soul and, and, and your ears. And I also felt like, Man, these guys are going James Brown. They're trying to really, 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 really make me make me get involved in what they were doing. And also the way that all of the all of that isn't for show, 
but it actually amplifies the song and the meaning of the song. You, you tie your videos and, and, and the audio, mm -hmm. I mean, in the video part, um, directly to the songs. And so I was pretty impressed by that. And I was pretty impressed, uh, extremely impressed by the precision of everything. Your family, <laughs> your family is pretty amazing. Uh, and, and the scale, the scale came off bigger than it, what it really was. And, and I, I, like Herb, Herb uh, intimated, I think that that's, that's uh, on video, that's one of the best shows I've, I've, I've seen in a long time. One of the best, yeah. if not the best in a long time, because I haven't gone to a show. I went to one show, but yeah, um, amazing, amazing, amazing. I'm, I'm, I was always a, already a big fan because of my connections with some of the people in Nashville talking about you, but uh, uh, meeting you uh, in, in person, <laughs> you know, on, on the internet, Blown away, blown away, blown away. Let me let me ask this question, because there are some things that I don't want to assume, but I think could be true. Um, and I knew sonically there was something I was familiar with as I was going through stuff. And then I saw Rob Kanelsky's name and went, yeah. ah, my man. Yeah. Um, yeah. Musical influences for you guys coming up. Who yeah. were they? Well, it's interesting. You know, we, we grew up uh, in Australia, you know, listening to. You know, our dad was a concert promoter. So one of the big artists that he brought back was a lot of Amy Grant. Yeah. And, you know, some of those types of things, you know, yeah. White Heart was another one from way back. I don't know if you're yep. familiar with White Heart. But Absolutely. Striper, Striper was another yep. one. Yep. And, you know, I've had even up to the other day, we were doing a Q&A and somebody said, oh, can you tell us your, your influences? And it's funny. I think people always discredit the music that you listen to before you actually consciously know yes. what that music is and if you like it or not. I think yes. it shapes your tastes. Yes. Yes. I think it shapes who you, who, you know, the, the likes that you have. Yes. It's not, you know, everybody thinks it's in high school when I was listening to, you know, Seal or the Goo Goo Dolls right. or, you know, right. some of these other, they're like, well, why wasn't it those bands? You know, why don't you list those bands? And no, they, they expand the palette. Right. If that makes sense. Right. I, yeah. I sometimes think it's the music that you listen to in your subconscious when you're two. When yeah. you're three, when yeah. you're four, it shapes you. And, and, you know, so when I look at those, those artists, you know, I'm a big fan of, you know, great melodies. Obviously, I think we all are, but, but great melodies is interpreted differently by different people. Right. But when I look at like the way that Amy Grant crafted a song, yes, mm -hmm. we do it differently. Mm -hmm. But I think you can see some common threads. Mm -hmm. You can obviously see the mm -hmm. love of trying to be authentic and transparent in your music. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, I've often even said just when it comes down to the show, I mean, mm -hmm. I want to be wildly entertaining so that people listen. So the yeah. people I do have a great time. Like, oh. you know, if, if you want somebody to just get up on stage and play the guitar, I mean, that's fine. And that may work for some people, but you know, what if you were to accentuate that entertainment? What if you were to accentuate your ability to sing that way or to play that guitar? Doesn't that just enhance, as, as you said, Dave, the song? Um, Cause at the end of the day, what we're all doing, it comes back to a song is, is yeah. the song a great song. If the song's a great song, it fuels the creativity of a music video. It yeah. fuels the creativity of, of the live show. And so, you know, those are, uh, you know, tastes of some of the, you know, the, yeah. the musical influences. <clears throat> and obviously you mentioned Rob and he's mixing the entire new project, which is, is he really? uh, super excited. Yeah, he is. Yeah. He is. So yeah. we're, it's I think I've got boy. actually I, I, after this, I got what Joel four or five mixes we got to listen to to get comments mm -hmm. on. So mm -hmm. it's a, uh, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a fun season. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I Correct me if I if I'm wrong, but I, I think you missed talking about the Beatles. For me, um, yeah. the foundation of a, of two lead singers, and then right. that's unusual. And then the the, the harmonies uh, are excellent. And so I hear a little tiny bit of of that influence. Um, probably probably just crept in without you knowing. But I, I like that. I like the fact with that that. Uh, family members harmonize. It's, it's just a beautiful thing because you've been doing it all your life, probably. But we we literally said in the past, Dave, we I've said if you someone because someone always asks this really ambiguous question, uh, particularly when you're a baby band, of like, mm -hmm. well, you know, what do you sound like? And it's like, how do you? Even, but my my right. my statement is, if you could take the harmonies from the Beatles, the sort of some of the the rock melodic elements from say you two yeah and then maybe marry it with a bit more of a modern like ryan tedder or one republic thing and yep. sort of mix it all together yeah uh you'd end up with uh, and maybe a theatrical score drop in like you know hans zimmer in there 
mm-hmm. and, and mix it all together, you'd end up with uh, for King Country. So it's funny you say the Beatles, Dave, because that's literally was one of the, yeah, it, it was kind of one of the de- 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 descriptors for us. Uh, yeah. to, 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 to and I would say the on the menu, give me a side of Imagine Dragons, just a little side. Okay. I don't want, yeah, I don't yeah, want a yeah. full plate and I want it on the side. So I just take the parts of it that make sense <laughs> and leave the parts that don't make sense. Um, I like that, Herb. I like well, that. I like that. I'm well, in. part of what's such a turn on, like I'm literally sitting here buzzing, is I stupidly in my left brain, right brain world, when, when it was actually Dave's idea to come up with the award show. And f- every time, since it's kind of my bailiwick, it's been, how do I find a moment? What do I do to match this music? What's going to be humorous? What's going to be the spot? What's going to be the beats? What's going to be, mm-hmm. where do I take the crowd? What's the finale mm-hmm. going to be? Mm-hmm. And people appreciate that work, which is why it's easy for me to recognize it. So now mm-hmm. my favorite dream is to create the Pensado Awards with you two. <laughs> just to come up with shit. <laughs> Okay. I might not get there, but I get to get We're in. Dreams. We're um, in. Man. But we'll give you a participation trophy if you don't make it. Oh uh, well, yeah, exactly. Everybody gets one of those. The um, some of some of your collaborations are just inspiring. Uh-huh. Um, whether it's Kirk Franklin and Tori Kelly and so so, but Dolly was particularly inspired, and she oh, felt man. as comfortable in that as I've ever seen her. It was just mm. seamless. Was was she as inspired? She felt like. She was enthused to do this. Like there was something that she, somebody recognized that she could be in this kind of contemporary vein, saying things that are important. Am I reading how the relationship went right? It, man, it was honestly, it was kind of an act of God um, yeah. on on multiple levels mm. because, you know, we'd had this song, God Only Knows, um, and we, we wanted a strong kind of powerful, particularly female presence on it because it just felt like a bigger story than the band. Yeah. And um, fast forward to when I was, you know, well, it was probably 15 years ago. Um, I, for a brief stint, was a Sunday school, speaking of backsliding, Dave, I was a Sunday school teacher. And then, then I backslid into becoming a musician. Um, but I, I, um, I taught these two young, a load of young men, but these two young men in particular, and they end up becoming junior managers for Dolly. Mm. So I, I, I sort of called them and just said, hey, we've got this song. It had already gone to radio at that point. And then within a week, we're on the phone with Dolly wow. herself. Wow. One of the more profound phone calls I think we've ever had. Mm-hmm. And she just says, she said in her own Dolly way, I'll give my best Dolly impression. She said, well, you're not going to believe this. I was, I was talking to Danny, that's her manager, uh-huh. Danny, and I was just saying, man, I felt God prompt me to get more involved with inspirational music. And not 48 hours later, your song came across my desk. And is. I just took it as a sign from God. And, and Herb, I'm telling you, Dave, she if rolled out the red carpet. She was like, well, we let's do a photo shoot. Well, hey, we're doing a music video for this, right? You know, wow. hey, I'm 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 hosting the CMAs. Why don't y'all come on the CMAs with me? Like wow. and, and, and obviously it took it all the way to winning a Grammy Award yes. with her for that song. And it just it was one of those moments where you go, man, you, you sort of hope this is what collaboration would be like. Yeah. And it re- you know, you guys know it rarely is. When you kind of peek right. behind the curtain, right. it can be a bit of an ugly business of like publishing and yes. who does what and where and oh, I'll sing on it but I'm not going to support it right. man through and through um just from 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 that day to this just the classiest kindest and really gave us kind of wings as musicians I remember in that first conversation at one point she said hey you know this is one of the this is one of the great songs I've ever heard this is the woman who wrote I will always love, uh, you know, I, I, I will always love it. This is, this is the woman that wrote right. Jolene. <laughs> right. About, about these two little Australian brothers saying, you know, one of the great songs she's ever heard. It, it just was, the whole thing was a mind blowing affair. Yeah. And uh, it, 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 everything you saw on screen and everything you felt in the song was very apropos and natural to how the whole thing kind of came about. And it comes off through the video, which is really hard. Yeah, yeah. Her. Like I was like, "Oh, this is a joy love fest thing happening yeah. here." Like, what was translating through the voice and the vocals, 
I was seeing on screen and it was just, I could tell, you can tell, you know, once you've done it for a while, you can sort of tell the difference, but from a vet who could cover it up, who's done it a million times, she was sort of, she, she opened herself up to being all the dolly she could be in this song. And it, and it just she, came through. She, for, for that music video, Herb, we, cause we had this idea of like, okay, we want to like showcase some, you know, physical illness or addiction. Mm-hmm. And we left it to her. We said, Hey, dolly, what, what, I remember the phone call. We said, what, what, what would you want to portray in this video? And she, she said, I, I want to portray a woman of, of the night. Um, which was what was beautiful about that. Speaking of synergy, was so in line with obviously Dolly and and her heart, mm-hmm. and 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 um, very natural in that regard. But it was also um, that's something that Luke and I've spoken about from the beginning. Is is we don't take up too many causes, but this this tragedy of human trafficking, which is kind of the second pandemic, oh. I think uh, another pandemic that we're facing right now, yeah. Yeah. Um, is such a reality. And so for her to say, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna step in the gap. For all those women who don't feel seen, who feel like their bodies can be bought, and 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 that's the most severe level. You've obviously got a sliding scale of girls at school who are taking yeah. selfies of themselves naked and sending them to their boyfriends, and then their boyfriends are uploading them to porn sites. Like there's all yeah. of these layers. Yeah. And she said, "I'm going to represent um, wow. those women," which is just yeah, just, once again, just my boss. Even, oh, uh, even in the even in the. The video, the live video behind you guys, she was good in that too. Well, and and, and also I would say this, and, and d- d- just really quickly, you and you and both of you as brothers, um, and and please hug mom and dad for us at Pensado's place because they clearly raised you correctly. Um, <laughs> Dolly was in, as inspired to do that because of who you are, and the mm-hmm. song that you wrote, and what you brought, and what you represent, and. So you all will never say it, but that's why we're here to say it for you. So hats off, kudos to that and and for being purposeful. And to the audience that's watching, that's what happens when you're purposeful. It, it's one thing to be cool it's another, and, and get your beats out and do all that. All that's cool. But you have an opportunity with a platform to be intentional, to be purposeful, to do good with stuff. And that's that's a high calling. It's a higher calling, and it's a great bar to go for. Not everybody gets it, but it's a great way to try to to keep going. And those of us who think we get there, we don't believe we're there. We just keep on going. Like we just keep striving. So that's my little editorial for the moment. Back to the interview. <laughs> okay, well that's that's uh, that's me right now. Interview, um, guys. Um, I don't think I've heard, I'm sure Herb will back me up on this, but I don't think I've heard a more important song in in, in a decade as Together. Um, I didn't make it, I didn't make it eight bars before I'm like grabbing tissues and everything and starting it over. And I listened to it this morning, probably 20 times. And uh, thank you for putting that out. That's a, uh, uh, that's an, uh, I can't describe it. You just have to go hear it. It's, it's a, uh, it's not maudlin. It's it's uplifting, but what a story and how you told it was just Ernest Hemingway. I mean, it was it was incredible. Mm-hmm. So, kudos mm-hmm. for that, and I appreciate you doing it because it felt like you were doing it for me. <laughs> and now now you've got relate and the new campaign. It comes out this week. Uh, yeah. I think August sixth. Um, the idea that you can be out supporting it uh musically is is great as well too are you excited about it what happens when it's time for the new single it's a little bit like oh god is my child gonna walk is it ugly is it you know is it missing an eye you, is it you gonna- guys know yeah yeah you guys know too well man you're reading out mail over here i'm impressed uh <laughs> you know i uh, yeah it's like obviously not your first rodeo doing this it's totally true man i mean look this new project we we have spent you know basically all of our last you know seven eight months working on and it's one of the first projects that we've been able to do exclusively home and we usually it's pretty busy and so we're bringing producers on the road you know we're riding on the road and we're doing all of it and there's an appeal to that that's Mm -hmm. exhausting it it is it's it's a lot yes and so for us to be able to be home and uh to work on this i felt like it felt um like we could be more articulate 
mm-hmm. maybe, you know, you're not, you're not just mm-hmm. kind of taking the themes that are coming at you, even from the, the road, mm-hmm. you know, there's, look, we just went through a pandemic, you know, what are the lessons that we've learned from that? I'm not going to write, you know, things necessarily just about the pandemic, but I think we all can realize that there's a lot of things that we, that it brought a lot of perspective. Right. And so what are those, what are the things that we want to, want to, want to say? And I think one of the things that with, with Relate that happened was, you know, people are walking through very, very different things all over America. Like if you're right. up in New York city on a 600 foot square fit flat and yeah. you're in lockdown, that's going to be very different than, you know, my situation, which was being out in the country a little bit, you know, still locked down, but I could walk outside. I could go mm-hmm. for a bike ride. I could go, mm-hmm. you know, check on all the different things. I could do my chores, you know, whatever. And there was mm-hmm. a semblance of normalcy in doing that. And so the question that we asked, like, well, okay, what if we didn't have the New York story? Can we still relate to those people? Yeah. Is there still actually empathy there? Like, can I have mm-hmm. compassion for someone who, you know, lost someone to COVID? But maybe I didn't. Mm-hmm. You know, and they, can mm-hmm. I still have someone who, you know, uh, you know, lost their job during that time? And, you know, what, what is that like? What, what does it look like to be empathetic in, you know, 2021? Right. And I think sometimes it's always we've felt like in the past. It's like the only way I really understand your situation is if I've walked through your exact shoes. And, mm-hmm. you know, look, I think if, you know, for instance, when, when I'm away mm-hmm. and I'm out of town and my wife is upset about something, mm-hmm. I haven't walked through her scenario but it mm-hmm. makes me upset as well. It makes me sad. And I right. always, always say to her, I was like, honey, you hurt, I hurt. Mm-hmm. And I think that today's day and age, even just based off of technology, we, we read these stories. It's like, no, I actually understand a little bit more what it looks like to that person. I can relate to them because if you hurt, I know what it feels like to hurt. It may not be the same scratch. But it may hurt. not be the same scar, but yeah. it's hurt. Yeah. And I know, what it like, I know what it feels like to be hurt. And so I think this song relate is uh, is is talking about it's you know, it's talking about all just that, and I'm excited about it. But you're right; it is a little bit like so. What are you thinking, my baby? Is it pretty yeah, or is right, it not? Right, exactly. uh, and uh, we're gonna find out on August sixth, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. And and I, and I must tell you, uh, let me just another tip of the cap. Lou, we haven't done it for ten years. Dave and I have talked about doing and talked to different people. You guys would be great actually at it about doing a show on couples. Because the mm-hmm. couple to the other person working, there's a whole environment that they have to deal with, handle. It's tough. It can break up relationships. And if you don't show people how to deal with it, then you're just learning by paint by numbers. And, right. and right. I, I so enjoyed watching your wives being interviewed with you. Um, uh, mm-hmm. I was researching some, and they're just the understanding of going through stuff. Cause you know, people think it, it, people think it's all kudos when you get hot, that's when it gets harder. You know, the right. pressures and stuff coming at you and the timing and the demand and all. So just kiss both your wives for mm. the folks of Consolas mm. for being really special, special partners. Here's we'll give them question. a very, we'll give them a very, very special kiss for you, Herb. And okay. also I'll say this, you're so right in that like, Failure does all the things that um, pushes humanity to be the best version of themselves. You know, yes. it it becomes more of a um, you, you're you're humbled. You're you've got to suit up. You you recognize yeah. your humanity. Success is the one that's really frightful. That's the one that you've got to watch out for the uh, the, the, the 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 potholes of ego or yes. you know, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and so you're, you're, you're spot on in saying it gets harder. It's, it's not harder. easier when there's it, success, it, it, but it, excuse me, you were going to say, no, I, no, I was just, I was sorry. I was just so excited. I was, I was going along with your thing. I, I people will ask about the show and I'll say, you know, the, the magic of it, it, it's one thing to get hot. It's another thing to stay hot. Yeah. That's a, that's a whole different science. It's a whole okay. different kind of, commitment to a quality level that you just can't let up on and and can go away and be ephemeral in just a second, you know? And and so I, I, that's why I appreciate, you know, there's multitudes of Grammy awards and and number one singles and Dove awards and on and on and on that over time, you know, it says, here's a consistent brand. And then it's up to you guys to keep the brand up and, and keep what's going on. So one, that's appreciative Two going to my creative set of questions, it also leads to a couple of interesting things. On the road, one, do you guys record on the road and what do you take out there? What do you guys do creatively? 
And then you have such interesting um, partners and collaborations, Taylor Parks, Josh Kerr, you know, Ted T, all those, Matt Hale, all, Rob Kanelsky also. How does the melange of the creative stuff of For King and Country work? <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Uh, you know, well, and, and look, one of the things that we've always tried to do is, is every time we work on a new project, we want to work with usually at least one new key collaborator because that I think it helps keep things fresh. fresh. It helps yeah. keep things a little bit like, you know, what are some tricks that they've discovered that we haven't. But Joel and I are in the past have been fairly notorious for a pretty small group of writers, a pretty small mm -hmm. group of collaborators. And because part of that is, I mean, look, you're never going to be right all the time and right. you need to have people that can tell you you're wrong. Right. And they need, and, and the only way that you really listen to the people, if they're telling you that you're wrong is if uh, you've got relationship with them. And so, yeah, so uh, this, this uh, round has been interesting. Ted T and Josh Kerr have kind of co-produced uh, basically the whole album bar uh, one song. Mm -hmm. And there's been a nice tension there because, you know, Josh Kerr's comes from the country world, comes from a little bit more of the writing side of things. And right. Ted comes from kind of, you know, he's been around doing it for a long time, but he's yeah. also known us since we were young boys, which is uh, kind of uh -huh. cool. But uh -huh. also there's, there's uh, you know, there's a tension of, of knowing there, you yeah. know, also like, you know, Kerr may push for something and he may go, yeah, that's cool, but not that cool or vice versa. Or he goes, I would never have done this, but he came up with something that I think is brilliant. But, you know, our, our collaborations this way around have been, okay, what does it mean to be pushed with the writing? And so we have worked with the, the Taylor Parks. We have worked with, uh, you know, a lot of different writers out in L.A. Uh, to see what it looks like to, you know, get in the room with different folks that, uh, you know, we just wrote a song with Michael Pollack not too long ago, mm -hmm. actually over Zoom, which I think was our only successful Zoom, right? Uh, <laughs> but, you know, we, we it, it, there's these people, there's been people that have pushed us uh, this time around. And yeah, so we do bring out uh, producers quite a lot onto the road. I think that's happening actually next week. Uh, uh, and, you know, a lot of times it's just this pretty simple rig. I mean, it's an Apollo and uh, Ted prefers uh, logic though we've pushed him into you know pro tools a little bit more this time around that's because uh, that's joel's uh, a little that's bit more me. joel's domain uh -huh. and uh and there's and there's a, something about the the tension of the road where you don't have all the mics you don't right. have all the outboard gear right. uh right. you may only want to you know this record for a lot of it we've recorded most of the demos on sm7s yep. and we now have vocals that are lasting uh, you know, that we otherwise would never, you know, we wouldn't have had because we you would just maybe just, try, you, know, try, you know, jump, you grab something tiny yeah. that's not quality. So it's been an, uh, you know, the, I think for, for Key and Country, there are some rules, but we're going to break the rules there and we're going to come back and do, do some different things to mess with the process. And hopefully you create fresher sounds that way. I've got a, I've got a small world thing for you. A friend of mine, a, a, a dear friend of mine named Busby, came back from Nashville and I said, what you, what you been doing? What'd you do? What'd you do? What'd you do? What'd you do? Oh, I worked on me. I worked with these two guys and, uh, he was on Amen. He's the one that wrote on Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And so, no, he, um, he actually, not only that Dave, very early on in our career, before we'd even released a record, we wrote with him and, um, and then obviously our men, um, coming about and that song, I remember the first time he heard, we had a rough version of it and he sort of, we were just playing him stuff. We were going to work on something new and we played him sort of a, a sketch of what our man was. And uh -huh. he was like, no, no, no. You know how Busby was, he always had a sense yeah, of the yeah. songs like, well, no, yeah. let's do that. And yep. it's been yep. really sweet to see. Um, we released it to radio this year, partly in honor of him and, and his wife and family and and uh, just to kind of preposterously, what, a month or so ago, Luke, it went, went number one and so we're, we're performing it at a benefit in Nashville for, for him um, and family this this fall um, at Bridgestone Arena and so he's he and family have been very close to our hearts and we're very thankful for that that little creative piece that will live on past all of us you know okay. that we got to kind of um, you know pen and, and write with him yeah what a how how blessed we all are to have been touched by Busby um, not just his skill, but his heart, his intellect, um, just, just a brilliant, um, he supported us so heavily that I, I used to get on the phone with him and go, why? He was like, cause man, you all are doing stuff we need. 
and yeah, and, yeah, you, you, you know, and, and he, he was selfless in his talent and, and also demanding in a way that I also respect. Yeah, no, I was gonna say exactly that, Herb, not without backbone. Like, yes. let's you gotta let's, let's memorialize him if fully. He, yes, I mean, I remember I was in a writing session actually working on what became together, and I got this sort of pretty <laughs> intense, uh, <laughs> Buzzby email, <-esque. laughs> yeah. Buzzby esque email. Yeah. And I was like, man, I stepped out of the writing session and we had it out on a call. It there was about, go. it was actually about our men and, and yeah. some sort of creative nuance that we felt, but that was part of, you know, it, it goes back to this tension thing. You can't yeah. have greatness without a certain, like you, how do you build muscle? You tear the muscle and it builds like, build and, 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 and so this idea that we're going to all get in a room and just high five and sing Kumbaya and, and, and cheers the whole time. It's just bollocks. It's, it's not true. That's right. And, and, and he understood that and knew the pressure points I felt like to kind of push that button. To, yeah, to, to, yeah. To get it to the, to the right spot. Yeah. He was, he was great at that. And now we come to batter's box, which I have a feeling um, there's great athletes in Australia. And then when you oh, sprinkle in that oh. Nashville thing on it, Dave, you could be in trouble, bud. We we use well. A when am I not Herb? Person. When am I not in trouble? <laughs> well, but these but but you're one. You're you're facing double batters, so that generally doesn't. Yeah, happen. I'm gonna I'm gonna start doing them in Russian or like Spanish or something. That'll give me an edge. <laughs> All right, let's tee up batters box and see how the boys do. Okay, one word, real quick. Let's go. Melody. Uh, voice memo. Ah, nice. Okay. I'm gonna give Luca. Uh, I'm gonna give Luca. Uh, a curveball. Sandy Patty. <laughs> My favorite. You know who she is, right? Of oh, course yeah. I know who Sandy Patty is. You're lying. You're absolutely. lying, man. You're lying. No, History. I know who Sandy Patty is. No, I absolutely okay, know who Sandy Patty is. That's one of my favorite singers of all time. I'm, I'm in, surprised that you pulled that out. I'll get another for you. The lead singer. With, technically, uh, Dave, te that's not one word. That's Is that meant to be one word? <laughs> Favorite. Well, Favorite. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, so this is for both of you. Your favorite key to See, sing in? The one that's best for my voice. <laughs> that's that's it. It. How about you, Joe? Man, that's, that's that. well, I would say, you know, I, I threw out C. That was the first thing that came to mind. But it's it's a funny thing. I'm, I'm sure I'm breaking the batter's box rules right. here. But it's a funny Fine. thing being a duo because you end up dancing around each other. And man, it's it's an exercise in humility too, because you go into the writer's booth and you be, or, the, or the, the vocal booth and you'll be like, hey, I'll sing one time, you sing one time. Mm -hmm. And speaking of, you know, competition, like may, may the best one. And so you end up, and then you, and then the other person end up sort of just holding up, be it through harmony or whatnot, holding up the other vocal mm -hmm. through the song. And so it, it's a, the, the key is tough because if I was a solo artist, I think I would answer very differently than the duo thing because we're bouncing. Right. We're Good bouncing point. everywhere. Well, and look, it's also interesting too because it wasn't a Max Martin who had the whole idea of I'm going to put the boy bands as high as they can sing because there's, once again, going back to Joel's word, there's a tension there. There's a, there's a uh, feeling that you get when somebody's singing on the edge of their range. Mm -hmm. But it's not always the easiest to sing. Right. Yeah, but right. it sounds best. Right. So, it's, so I'm it's basically kind of yelling. I'm basically thing. yelling, yelling at the top of my range the whole time now. As a result, <laughs> Herb, um, make a note to deduct five points because they went too long on that one. <laughs> okay, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> Let's get back on flow here. Um, Man, I was favorite mic, we batting a thousand. Favorite vocal mic, SM7. Wow, wow, old school. We oh, literally said around. on this record, we said, "Hey, we said." Um, and we didn't know what we we're saying at the time. Luke's since had vocal surgery and the whole thing. But we said every demo we're singing it in a quiet room. Um, every scratch vocal we're singing it in a quiet room, and we're singing all of it on an SM7. So literally every single vocal, barring maybe one or two on this whole record, will be on an SF7. Wow. wow. Okay. Great. I, I, I'm glad to hear that because that's a, that's a, I, I call this James Brown microphone. Uh, the Ryman Auditorium. Stunning. Spiritual. Yeah. Uh, any regrets? Uh, I'm not going to give you one word because right. uh, it's. Impossible. I think regrets are di regrets are difficult because there are things that we've all made mistakes in. 
but they're also the things that have helped make us the people that we are today. Mm-hmm. And so I have a very hard time going back saying, okay, I man, wish stop I didn't doing have this. that. Uh, one word. Come on. <laughs> Damn. One word. Find, them, find them more, Herb. Okay, I got a fun one for you. Um, favorite Beatles song? And, and pick a song. Oh, with Luke, you gotta, you gotta answer. You gotta answer this. <laughs> the Yellow Submarine. I, I'm sorry, I spoke over you, Joe. Hey, Joseph. Jude. Hey. Luke's oldest son's name is Jude. Is it really? How cool yeah. is that? It is, and he always thinks. You know, he kind of says the other day he came to me. He's like, "So was that song written about me?" And I'm like, <laughs> not, "Not, not quite, not quite, buddy, not quite." <laughs> Can I give you a fun Nashville fact in the middle of? Yeah, I'm not you too, Herb. Absolutely. We're we're blowing this thing up. <laughs> so that's all right. We're having a blast. Um, <laughs> okay. If you tour around Blackbird Studios, John McBride's place, mm-hmm. all the codes to the gating to get through are tied into the Beatles. Just yeah. so you know. I don't know what the codes are, but his his homage to the Beatles is every time he walks that's through right. a gate or somebody does, he that's what he put. And the other funny I'm gonna thing, type in I'm gonna type in the the numerical of, of Jude at some point uh on and the see path, if it just works. To see, just see what I can get. He'll probably it'll be something like you can get in the front door but you can't get in the studio. Of you course. know what I'm saying? Of course, of course. And John will have planned that. Um, okay, guys, let's get serious. This is a very, very, very serious part yeah, of the show. So, sorry. So we're That's minus five. five right now. And by yeah, the way, Herb, the deck, the doc, the deck two points from you. Yes. Right to, no, he uh, needs minus five, too. He went, he yeah, went long. I'm, I'm low. No, Herb, Herb, Herb runs the show. He can, he, can, he, can, he can fire me if he wants. Major or minor? Minor. Yeah, good. That right answer. We we literally couldn't couldn't write a major song to save our life when we started out. Everything was so. Joel, dreary stop and doing stuff. that. Stop. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, you you can expand on this one. I'll give you a good one. Religion. Jesus. Yeah, there's the one Jesus. we're into the count. Man, uh, that's uh, right. Let me. That's right. I learned, us, I learned that us, one in let Sunday let school. Expound. Let us expound. Yeah. Okay. Jesus. G- 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 Jesus gets a a bad rap in in the West, but. Here's a man who, um, let's just take women, for example. I've, I've been, uh, this has been on my mind a lot lately. Mm-hmm. A man who loved his mom, mm-hmm. a man who did his first m- miracle for his mom and a bride, mm-hmm. who told he was the son of God. It told, the first person he told he was the son of God to was a racial minority outcast woman, mm-hmm. was anointed three times by women. His work was funded by women. The last ones at the cross were, were women. Um, the, the ones that wrapped his dead body were women. The first ones to run out and tell the world what I believe is the greatest news moment known to man were women. The first word out of his, first documented word out of his mouth when he came back to life was woman. Like this, this is a guy who, when you look at, when you look at all the things we face now, um, Dave, from, from, you know, inequality, to 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 racial tension to these are things he was he was already working through and he did it through love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and and so i just you know i I just think he's such a such a masterful incredible um character if you want to call him that that uh yeah he he's he's what encompasses that word there's my soapbox Give me wow. plus five points. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll give, give you points twenty back. points. That's timely, and 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 I'm I'm sure that you did it better than Luke. So, all right. Um, <laughs> so, uh, one word about your brother. Mm, good one. Uh, about Joel, leader. Nice. Mm. Joel. Oh gosh, there's so many that just flooded my brain. Well, none that are um, vulgar, but just try try one, and don't just dis- none, none that are descriptions of his face because that would hurt him. Um, um, kind and conscientious. Mm. Uh, mm. Well, we ended up with three. Up. Thanks, guys. I, uh, thanks for letting me tease you. I appreciate it. I don't, I'm, you know, but 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 I think there's another thank you. You know, I was generally when we wrap up the show we ask people to give, you know, a bit of advice to, to our audience that's watching because they get a chance to hear from me. So we'll do that. But I think the other thing that I'd like to do is just say, again, because we've interviewed so many people, there certain, we know when things are good and we know when things are lifted. And it's because it, it, I'm sure there are shows 
where it just goes, you're just muscle memory is just killing it. And the show is just falling into place and you're doing your thing. This, this show has been that for Dave and I. It's just, this could go on mm. another two hours. Yeah. Mm. We just roll and we don't have to do it formatically. And it says everything about who you guys are as a group, as a family, as brothers. And, and that, that, you're, that, you're, that your belief system is front and center as your musical talent. It is so inspiring to me personally. I just must tell you. Because um, I think it'd be easy for Dave and I to be jaded and cynical and say, oh, another interview. You all are the, mm -hmm. and I'm going to, I'm going to use a, 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 an epithet. You all are the absolute shit. <laughs> I, ab absolutely. Um, I'm so impressed. Um, I hope you'll stay in touch with us. You know that this platform is yours. Anytime mm -hmm. you want to come on, anything that you want to do, um, we are here for you in every way possible. You are making the world better. And um, um, maybe others won't say it, but but I absolutely will say it. It's, it's, it's just impressive. Man, Joel, Joel, do you think we could do a show tonight after this? I mean, maybe we're just done. For Man, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to lev levit 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 levitate on stage. Jeez, <laughs> yes. my goodness. Guys, so, thank we'll, you so much we'll, for your we'll, courage. We'll, your uh, we'll send you an invoice tomorrow. <laughs> Please do. Hey, let me, let me say this, not to, not to pay a compliment back with a compliment, but, you know, and we're not young guns anymore, but it's easy to start out with all the bravado and the the the, the sort of starry-eyed and mystified feeling, mm -hmm. um, it's another thing to stay in it and to see the muck and the mire, and to have the hard interviews that you've had over your five hundred plus episodes, and to still choose to remain um, misty-eyed and 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 and, and just. Uh, astounded by the beauty of music to stay open. And I mean, this is the highest of compliments because we, we, we saw it and she's obviously a couple of generations beyond you, but we, we saw it with Dolly, mm -hmm. that choice when she, man, she, you would talk about a woman going through hell and back in the music industry, yeah. you know, yeah. set aside her childhood. Yeah. Um, she still is choosing to stay starry eyed and mystified. Mm -hmm. And I, I, we sense that with you guys too, honestly, mm -hmm. that, that, that sense of like, Man, this is an amazing thing. You guys and we are a part of this sort of bizarre miracle and magic trick that is creating and changing airwaves. Yeah. I mean, you want to talk about a miracle. Yeah. It's invisible. Yeah. We get to change airwaves that literally change the metaphysical state of people's minds and bodies. 100%. 100%. Like if you don't believe in the miraculous, just go to a show and you can see yeah. people walk in with a 10,000 pound load on their backs and they walk yeah. out it's levitating, you know, it's so I love seeing you guys give us hope to see you guys going before us and saying, hey, we're still going to choose to be to see the magic in it. I, so well I had done. the honor of being Maurice White's partner. And so mm. when you talk about a front man of a band, Earth, Wind and Fire and a creator mm. and if he could be here to see you guys yeah. in the way that I know him he mm. would be so blown away you would have clicked every box you know I, I again I was in a lucky position Maurice for, for 30 years had Parkinson's he trusted me to be around him. he had other team members um, but I got the chance to know him and, and he had a chance to evaluate me you know he one day he said man you listen like a musician and I said, I don't need any other compliments musically for the rest of my life. Like Black Beethoven said, I listen like a musician. I'm cool. Mic drop out. Um, and I'm telling you, at a for king and country show, Maurice White would just be literally shaking in his in his chair. And, and he was he was one of the best. So um, if we give each other any more compliments, people are going to think that somebody paid somebody to do it. <laughs> um, oh, we didn't. No, I, I know. Uh, we'll out later. Shout out to Sean and Paul for making this happen. Shout out for you guys' flexibility. Um, hopefully, this interview was fun for you. I, I Absolutely. Hope uh, good, good, because we 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 get to measure folks who are interviewed by lots of people, and <laughs> they let us know whether we're we're on point or not on point. And this just felt like four four bros having a conversation. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for the time. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Uh, Dave, why don't you take us home real quickly? I will, but he just said that same thing to two radio stations that I just saw. You got anything more invented? <laughs> you guys are my two favorite guys that I've spoken to today. Okay, that works. <laughs> yeah, I, I changed the subject in a major, major way. Uh, <laughs> um, I, this is going to be tough, but um, um, there's a saying, you don't know what you got till you lose it. And um, I'm going to go back to the song together. I think that if you're, if I think that that song has miracle components in it. And, and yeah, there are, my wife just went through a modern day miracle. We almost lost her. In fact, we did lose her for a little bit. And um, I, I understood immediately how much I missed her. And, and I, I'm not the greatest husband. I'm, I'm faithful, but I'm, I'm, I'm I kind of live my own little world in my own little world. And um, so, so my thing is, while you got it, treat your family right because they don't, they don't stick around forever.